And welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that just embodies metaphorically circling the drain. Now, if you've watched this show long enough, you probably know that I like to revisit certain, often irrational, childhood fears. I mean, in the past, we've tackled things like the emergency broadcast slash alert system. Oh, bite me. What now? Will you get on with that? We've tackled clowns. The magic clown. Aren't you so glad your parents were the first ones in the neighborhood to own a television? Let's all sing the Bonomo song good and loud. And we've tackled evil possessed VHS tapes. Now, one of these certain fears that I had long forgotten about was recently brought to my attention by one of our viewers, and it proved to be the springboard for today's show. So with that, today we're going to look at those uh, TV and film logos that could be viewed as a bit scary, at least when you were a kid. And we'll look at some other nostalgic video terrors too, like, uh, oh, the FBI warnings and stuff. So... Let's take a look. Come on. I won't bite. Now, admittedly, growing up, most media logos didn't so much scare me as they indicated to me that the show was over. And if it was on a videotape, yes, I was very much a VHS child, thank you very much. It meant that I could be facing the white screen of death or some other potentially shrill video gremlin at any moment, and I better stop that tape. Anyway, back on the logos, apparently these things really scared a lot of 70s to 90s era children. So much so that I found several compilations of quote-unquote scary logos on YouTube some with alarmingly high view counts, by my standards anyway. So I started to look around at some of these compilations, and I found a few that I remembered and loved, so much so that it caused me to just well up with nostalgia. Oh, oh, oh I remember this one! That takes me back. Oh, I remember this one too! It always meant that the Three Stooges were just about to start. Stepping in a time machine. Oh, oh, oh and do I get the uh, blue sunshiny thing too? Yes! Yes! Oh, oh, this takes me back. Oh, oh, I remember this one too! Oh, oh. oh. <sighs> Though I personally never really fell victim to childhood logo phobia, I think I can understand the logic. I mean, a lot of these logos can seem cold, distant, impersonal, etc. And the music could be unintentionally creepy as well. Presumably unintentional, anyway. If there was a common thread to the scary logos, it usually laid more in the soundtrack than anything else. From where I stand, most of the supposedly terrifying logos were just victims of what I like to call the protect and survive syndrome, after the British nuclear war preparedness shorts. You know, attempts at being cool and futuristic, which would just come out kinda apocalyptic. In retrospect, the protect and survive syndrome doesn't surprise me. Starting in the early 70s and all the way through to the mid-late 90s, budgets for things like orchestras were disappearing fast. So what did the studios, networks, and especially the cheap no-budget video distributors do to make up for this? They hired some dude with a synthesizer. And what did 80s synth dudes like to do? They liked to create what they viewed as futuristic sounds, of course. It's just a shame that so many of them failed miserably.
Occasionally, I found some actual logos, you know, the video part, that could be viewed as a little scary. For example, the old late 60s Screen Gems logo. This is like the Rorschach test of logos. Everybody has a different interpretation. To me, this logo looks like rapidly congealing cartoon blood on a solid protein background. Another staple of potentially unnerving video is the zooming logo. With regards to these logos, invariably, internet pansies like to add cute words like doom, death, and killer to these logo names. For example, you've got the Viacom V of Doom. Ow! You've got the Paramount Serial Killer logo. Ow! And lastly, the Warner Brothers Vampire logo. Ha! Missed me! Ow! Occasionally, you do get that perfect storm of creepy audio and video. For example, there's this Russian company whose logo sequence is a bit of a nightmarish non sequitur. So, Sergei, I had this idea for our studio's logo tag. It starts with the sound of a film projector, and then you see a pool ball rolling off a queue, and it starts rolling into a cartoon tunnel. And for a finale, a decapitated Buddha statue appears, hence the black background and some scary music plays. So, what do you think? I think you need to start coming to work sober. Speaking of non sequiturs... Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. Meow. Peaches. Dump dump. Hey, if they can do stuff that doesn't make sense, so can I. With regards to the Perfect Storm logos, this ubiquitous one from my formative years, from Deke, could mess with your head. It begs such questions as, why is there a video camera in this kid's bedroom, and is there really a star in the universe that looks like a crappy 80s TV logo, complete with trademark notice? But of course, what everybody remembers about this one is the disembodied kid voice at the end. <laughs> ah yes, the voice of the little murdered girl's spirit. How precious. And how about the logo that forever proved that a certain famous d character is indeed a robot? Yeah, unnameable character skeleton! Since we're on the topic of skeletons and stuff, Probably my favorite logos are the ones of disembodied heads, like the PBS logos. But did you know that this practice goes back some 100 years? When L. Frank Baum, author of the Fill in the Blank of Oz books, started his own film company in 1914, well, the man was a visionary. And rounding out this easily exhausted topic, I think I can prove once and for all that you can never have too many crappy early computer graphics.
By special arrangement with Viacom International, Magnetic Video Corporation is proud to offer the following major motion picture on video cassette. That was so scary, it scared the blood right back into my veins. What a feeling. <laughs> oh, I just love horror. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Blood and gore. That's why I'm eating potatoes. Oh, it's yours too? Good. And let me tell you something. All of us at Aim That Video have put together a series of some of the most terrific horror sci-fi films of all time. When DVDs first came out, I thought it would spell the end of pre-show warnings and previews and junk. Of course, I was 100% accurate. Having said that, there is still a certain degree of nostalgic childhood terror, to coin a phrase, to what you'd find at the beginning of videotapes. It could certainly make a six-year-old kid jump a bit when the instant he pops in that tape, he doesn't see the plain old black screen, but... Instead, he sees the MGM lion staring him down, while in suspended animation, no less. Or maybe he sees a very skeletal adjust tracking notice. Of course, what we all remember most about tapes was the FBI warning, or your country's equivalent thereof. You just gotta love an angry, verbose warning about hundreds of thousands of dollars in potential fines and decades in prison if you, God forbid, show your movie to anyone. Possibly even yourself! Now, if you want to talk melodramatic, when I was a kid, my mom had the then-new Richard Simmons deal a -meal set. Of course, it contained a videotape, which had an ever-so-slightly overwrought FBI warning. Now, let me just say that I have not edited or embellished this clip in any way. Programs and important events on every subject imaginable. As far back as the early days of Betamax, we're talking around 1977, there have been certain individuals with a certain contempt for those legal warnings, especially, unsurprisingly, bootleggers. Here's my personal favorite. I loved Weird Al Yankovic growing up, and I often rented a little documentary about the man called The Complete Al, which never made it to DVD for some reason. It has my second favorite FBI parody.
And I have to give this clip honorable mention. And for our British and Australian friends, you've got the bootleg warning. Beware of illegal video cassettes. Check whether this video cassette carries a genuine label hologram. Video piracy is a crime. Do not accept it. Demand a genuine cassette from your video store. Poor quality illegal video cassettes reduce your viewing pleasure and jeopardize future film production. Oh gee, I sure hope this tape isn't a bootleg, in spite of the holographic sticker. Let's find out! Well, the quality certainly sucks enough. You know, it's been known to happen that VCRs do occasionally devour videotapes. And if you're a good, thrifty customer like I am... Very funny, Ed. Sometimes you try and fix that tape. And in fact, here's one, um, but you're just gonna have to take my word for it. Anyway, until I was researching this episode, I had absolutely no idea that this is apparently illegal. At least according to this FBI warning. Okay, so you finally made it through all the logos and warnings and previews and crap. Is it finally time to just kick back and enjoy your show? Hell no! In fact, it's time for you to whip out those credit cards, folks, because we got a special offer that you cannot refuse. I'm still amazed that there was never a crappy horror film during like the you know, late 80s, early 90s that had a plot revolving around killer VHS logos and FBI warnings and stuff. American X to C. See? Three X's. Oh, this ought to be good. It is payback time. dream. That's it for today's archive. Join us next time when we... Excuse me. I swear, I'm interrupted so often. Every time it seems like these days. FBI! On the ground! On the ground now! Okay, okay! Ow! 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 Ow!
Oh, come on, you weren't really expecting some weird logo to appear here, were you? Okay, you win. 